Good evening, everyone, and welcome to All Games No Masters. I am your host, but not your game master, Aki, and All Games No Masters is the GMless branch of the RPG Exploration Society with Saving Throw. So welcome to all of our explorers. Before we get started with the announcements, just want to go around the horn really fast and make sure we introduce everyone, starting with Amanda. Hey, hi, uh, I'm Amanda. Um, last week, I was playing Fawn, uh, and I will also be playing her this week. Thanks so much, Amanda. How about you, Randy? What's up with you? Hello, uh, my name is Randy Alvarenga. I am playing the crap singer, Darth Okay. All right, Max? Hi, I'm Max. I'm going to be playing Leaf the Giant. And I uh, think you're all very tiny and small and adorable. And of course, again, I'm Aki. I'll be playing Caspian the Raven. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to be playing in part two of Fall of Magic with all of you. Uh, but before we get started with that, first we want to let you know what our goals are. Um, we are aiming for $250 per episode and or 15 new subs or Patreon pledges. Our season long goal is to reach 150 new subs or pledges by June 30th. And if we reach that goal, we'll unlock a poll where you can choose our final game of the season. I bet you're curious about what those final games are going to be. And if you are, this is definitely the place to find out because I'm about to tell you what they are right now. The four games that we have chosen as our backups uh, are Beak, Feather, and Bone, Fiasco, English Eerie, and Fetch Quest. If you want to decide which of those four games we're going to play for our final game, then you definitely want to help us reach our goal uh, because you have the power then. Uh, if you don't, then, you know, we'll have the power and we'll just choose whatever. But if you want the power... It'll be bad. Yeah, it'll, it'll be bad. Don't let us choose whatever. Have, like, take take the power into your hands. We're giving you You've permission got to the do power. so. Yes! All right. Now, Hitting $250 in donations allows us to pay this amazing cast, and by God, they are fucking amazing, um, and keep content like this on the air. And we know you want this content. Uh, even if you can't afford to back us, please spread the word and share the stream with family and friends. Uh, if you're not, o you're not only helping us, but you're helping all the indie game designers that we feature as well. $15, 1500 subs, or five gift subs will allow you also to send us a message, which we will read live on air. And I promise, unlike Stephen, I will actually pronounce your name correctly. Uh, we are proudly sponsored in part by Roll20, Fall of Magic, and many of the games we play here are available natively within the Roll20 app. So you better check it out right now. And we also have a giveaway today, thanks to our friends at Die Hard Dice. You can enter the raffle by first following the channel and then in chat entering excellent exclamation point raffle and a number between one and ten. You can buy up to ten tickets and subs get a bonus 30 tickets when they enter the raffle. So consider supporting us before you enter. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that you can save 10% off at Die Hard Dice by using the code natural20 at checkout. Use command D-H-D-I-C-E for uh, in chat for links and info. And you can order our friend Critical Bards Dice set and get your 10% off. So you're like double helping friends, which why wouldn't you want to do that? Uh, and hey, to everybody who's watching us over on YouTube, thank you so much. Uh, do us a solid and leave us a like, comment, subscribe, the whole nine yards. Uh, it really helps the show and the channel as a whole. And lastly, please consider joining our Patreon now and be a part of the new Exploration Society. We're hoping to grow and if we can get 500 new backers this month, we'll be on track. Now, that's a lot, but we can do it. This is a crucial step in keeping our content on the air and eventually growing the channel. Your support comes with many rewards like special pins, swag, merch discounts, one page adventures written by our crew and more. So be a part of this society and join up today. Now, with all of those announcements out of the way, I think it's about time we move on to the second part of Fall of Magic. Now. You will remember in the first part of Fall of Magic, our group of uh, adventurers set off from Ravenhall to discover, uh, or not to discover, but to travel to the land of Umbra, wherein we might be able to either solve or at least discover the reason why magic is dying. Um, Fawn, who is our uh, fighter and uh, a knight of Stormguard, um, is a uh, god motivations for why she wants to go to Umbra 
Uh, do you want to explain to us what those might be, Amanda? Uh, yes. So when she was young, her brother was turned into a dog by by a, like a rogue mage. Um, so she, you know, has been defending uh, the land against abuses uh, of magic or by magic doers. Um, and is taking the last Magus uh, over to Umbra to, uh, actually, is it Magus or Magus? Uh, I've been saying you know? Magus, but I think there's possibly several different pronunciations. I've never heard it said out loud it? before, honestly. So, As Magus, a child Magus. playing Chrono Trigger, I called it Magus. So mm. yeah, there's that. I'll go Magus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, so she is going so that she can ensure that magic finally dies, hoping that that will be what finally returns her brother to the family. So that's fun, and what she's up to. What about Darthor? What is Darthor's motivation for being on this journey? So Darthor's motivation primarily started as chronicling this journey for the Magus for the people of uh, where he's from, which is Estalia. But um, throughout the journey, he had some adventures. There were some scary times. And I think the mages has uh, really made an impression on him where he is starting to wonder if he should be more into trying to help the mages because the mages saved his life. Hands down, saved his life. So, yeah. <laughs> so he's in it to win it now. Ah, what about Leaf? What's he in it to win? Uh, it as well. Um, Leaf is uh, uh, is a, a magical creature and believes that as magic dies out, uh, along with the Magus, uh, so will he and his people. Uh, and so he he is here to try and save magic in order to kind of save all magical creatures. Um, that might he might be wrong, but. That would be like a. It never works out like that, does it? I mean, let's all be real. Yes, I, I guess we're going to see. All right, and of course, Caspian is a raven of Raven Hall. Um, has through power, uh, through the power of magical training <laughs> and magical usage, slowly been transforming into a raven from their human form for most of their life, and is reaching the final stages of that, just as magic is beginning to die. Um, they are a senior mage uh, in the Ravenhall Order, and so therefore are escorting um, the Magus Magus to Umbra. Um, and they are kind of the neutral party in all of this. They are not concerned one way or the other about saving or destroying magic, uh, but mostly just um, curious about discovering what has caused the fall of magic in general. And I think understanding is their general purpose in all of this is they, they simply want to know. Uh, they, they're not particularly driven to any one action. Um, but I think uh, that could possibly change. Um, where we left off, we had just reached the Hall of the Woods, which uh, has an order that serves the, the mages and the mages of this land. Um, and uh, we have not yet done any scenes in this area just yet, um, but um, all of our tokens are set aside and ready to go. Um, so uh, it, does anybody have anything particular that they'd like to, to uh, do a scene about? Um, now that we have reached the Hall of the Woods? Or do we want to just uh, say that our our party spent a night there recuperating and then moved on? Um, we can do this one way or the other. Um, I'm okay with it being the place we stayed for the night. Yeah, we the, the Grey Rangers were very hospitable. We did a little scene with them last week, I feel, when they just kind of came in and said their hellos. I'm, I'm down to... Yeah. All right. In that case, does they anybody smell. feel moved to move the mate, mate us on to the next scene, which I believe would be our Spirit River? Um, Spirit River. Yes, the next the next location on the on the map is Spirit River. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move the mages. I'm gonna I'm gonna get us kicked off here. All right. So, the Magus is moving to the Spirit River. Uh, the prompt of which is, "What follows you?" And when we wake up in the morning, feeling like P, P Diddy, I, 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 I got you. 
Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. When we wake up in the morning in the hall of the woods, we are woken up earlier than we anticipate by the Grey Rangers. The sun has not yet quite begun to rise in the sky when we are shaken from our sleep. And one of the Grey Rangers, one of the commanders of the of the order kind of kneels down next to the Magus and says, I am sorry, but I believe it is best you move on quickly. We have heard some um, vicious howls and screams in the night. We believe that there are there are creatures on their way to abscond with you into or, or hurt you or kidnap you or something to that end. And the Magus and you know then rises and gathers the rest of you and you all begin. Uh, we all begin to move um, very early in the morning towards uh, what is known as the Spirit River. Um, and the Magus kind of sits in the middle of the four of us, kind of as we we form a protective circle around them. Um, what does the Magus look like to everyone this morning? Um, I think the Magus is very um, Kate Planchette in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> just the long, like, just, just. I mean, you know what? I, everybody knows yeah. what I mean. I don't even have to yeah, describe you it. You don't okay? have to describe it. Very ethereal, <laughs> radiant, uh, yes. eternal just beauty. Long hair and yes, Great. floaty. What does what do they look like to Darthor? Uh, to Darthor, I think they're still an epic warrior uh, with a a sword that glitters in the like in the sunlight. Um, it is just like you said, long hair. But for Darthor, a more powerful like I can kick butt kind of uh, uh, like Bit more Eowyn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've got the Galadriel. We've got Eowyn. All right, uh, which. <laughs> Which female character from Lord of the Rings does she look like to you today, Leaf? Uh, I don't know, like a uh, Sheila Bronstein. She's just famed for walking through the background of many shots. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, who does? <laughs> who do, what does? What does the Magus look like? What does it look like? Yes. Um, I think the Magus looks sort of like a kind of um, very traditional woodsy ranger, sort of like the Grey Rangers, but maybe an earlier, older iteration of them. Um, you know, wearing so kind of, of leaves of and vines. So instead of one of the ladies, it's Aragorn. Got it. <laughs> uh, is there no like if like Aragorn was sort of an ant person? You know, like is there like oh. who's like that? Maybe the um, who's the nice brown wizard who's always covered in gunk and animals oh, oh, and oh, trees oh, and stuff? Oh, um, Radagast. Radagast. The, the, the there brown. we go. Yeah, yes. sort of a yeah, Radagasty see, type character. You know, I'm not like a big Lord of the Rings fan though, because I, if you offered me a, like a thousand dollars, I could not tell you what her character's name is. Sheila Blanchett's character? Or Sheila no, Kate Blanchett. <laughs> oh, Galadriel. Galadriel. <laughs> sure. All right. Cool. Uh, I'm going to say that, uh, I'm going to take that Ent idea even further and say that to uh, to the Raven, they actually look like like a large tree. Like the horse is like gone. Like, you know, they are just sort of this large, like living Entish sort of creature. Um, yep. Cool. All right. Now, why don't we decide? Does anybody have a scene specifically in the Spirit River? Like, um, so, what does the Spirit that, River look I, like? Yeah, that's that's sort of what I want to know. Is what does this sort of what does this area look like? I think that as we come out, uh, it, this is still in the forest, uh, but we're starting to get to the edges of it. And I think that <laughs> the first signs that we're starting to get closer to the sea is kind of this. Uh, as the sun rises, this sort of shimmer on the horizon that we can barely see. And as we get closer, it gets brighter and brighter into like this thick ribbon of water, sort of cutting through the thinning trees. Um, and you can see kind of a break in the mountains as well as we, as we like, if, if you could almost imagine the sea on the, like in the distance, like you feel like you can just, you could almost see it, but not quite. It's like kind of this, radiant glimmer just at the edge of the horizon at this point. And I think that's kind of what Spirit River looks like as we travel down it. Um, I have one. 
cool. I would like to take. Um, so, my little token. There you are. I'm going to go drifting. Um, which is a memory of your parents. Um, so, we've been walking for quite a while now. Um, and I'm not going to lie, everyone is starting to smell a little bit. Um, so, having come across uh, the river, Bonnet well, decided to find like a little kind of secluded part of it. Um, and is floating like down the river. Well, <laughs> just kind of on her back, um, just just kind of drifting, as it says. So um, while she does that, she's um, just kind of going back to, uh, thinking back to when she was maybe mm, like 12 uh, or 13 years old. Um, and uh, I don't know if I want someone to like play this or not exactly, but like um, she's remember going, going in to talk to her mom who was sitting at the table and um, her dad, uh, had died the year before um and her mom was just just working working at the table it was something she saw happen pretty much every day um because her mom devoted her entire life uh after what happened to her brother to trying to figure out how to reverse it people to talk to places to visit tinctures to try um everything like that so she just kind of goes through a like a repeating kind of wheel of all the instances when she would go and try and get her mother's attention for something um, and just either ignored, rebuffed, um, anything that didn't have anything to do with um, with finding out how to turn her brother back um, pretty much didn't exist for her mom. So uh yeah, it's a very, very lonely remembrance that she's uh, having while she's just kind of floating down the river. Wonderful. Anybody else feeling something? Yeah. Oh, I I think, uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, Maybe I Maybe you'll get lucky and you both want it and you can just do the same together. So, this is, uh, I'm gonna do fishing. Um, and so what I think is happening here is first, um, Darthor is trying to learn to fish and not being very good at it, getting frustrated, tying the string and casting it and it's, it's not get, going anywhere. But I do need someone to help play a memory that plays through his mind as he's sitting here frustrated with himself. Um, I need someone to play what I would imagine is um, basically the master crab singer, the one who sends crab fingers out on journeys. Um, and specifically to, uh, uh, to make it clear to Darthor uh, that he needs to bring the mages to Astalia so that they can help control what's happening with magic. And does that mean like whatever that means? Yeah. I can I can I can yes. play. I'll play it. Cool. So uh so Darthor is sitting, he's casting, and then as his his frustration is just rising, he, he thinks back to that day where he was asked into the master crab singer's office. Uh huh. So you finally made it. Wonderful. Yes. Um, you, you, you asked for me specifically. Indeed I did. I wanted to ensure that you understood the parameters of your assignment. Yes, I understand that I am to document uh, the journey and to bring them here. But beyond that, I... I, I, cannot, I cannot stress enough how absolutely vital it is that you guarantee not only the safe passage of the Magus, but also their arrival here. We do not meet with them. It'll be very difficult for us to help stem the tide. Yes, but... Uh, I, and please do not misunderstand me. 
Master Crab Singer. I and do not be easy to misunderstand. Understood. I will do as you ask. But what I don't know is why the Magus needs to come through Stalia at, at all. It's it, it it is one of the the places, but keeping the mages here stops the mages from going all the way to to their goal. That that's not good story telling. Who said anything about stopping the magus? We simply want to detain him for a brief amount of time to make sure we understand exactly what it is she's going through, and. If that happens to be for a prolonged period, that is not through any desire to stop them from completing their mission. Magic will die one way or the other, with or without her influence. But, and and, and please forgive me here, but every- Make sure you're not unforgivable. Yes. Every great story that we've ever learned in in the halls here has been about magic and and and, and the the great tales of the ancient times and and all i'm asking is if we keep the mages here aren't we playing into the end the demise of that magic the end of those stories i i don't understand why i get I it i think i think Darth, or you are in need of a bit of reframing. The death of magic does not mean the death of stories. Indeed, it is perhaps quite the opposite. Who will tell those tales? Who will write a new history for our people to look back upon in the future? Times change. It is our job as crab singers not to interfere with that change, but to remark upon it to be the people who tell the people, who tell the next people what happened. And our job is not to be active participants, but observers. Then why, why do you promise that I will be the next in your seat when you are gone, if I do this action? Well, Sometimes change needs a little bit of a nudge. And once you've reached a certain point in your career as a crab singer, you will have the power to make those nudges yourself. It is all I've ever dreamed of to to be on one of these journeys. And so you shall be, but you have a job to do and I expect you to do it. Understood. I will do that. And from there, he flashes back to the boat and he looks over at the mages who now looks like a frail old man, just in tattered clothes, coughing, racking, in in pain. That's where that scene is. Cool. You you wanted to do one, Max? You got one? Um... Uh, yeah, I, I have I have one I'd like to do. It'll be really quick. Let's see. I'm going to move myself over here by the starlight. Um, and, you know, uh, we're walking along the Spirit River here. And as we're going, Leaf sort of catches up to Fawn. And of leans down over Fawn's shoulder. You and I have something we need to speak about. Do we? Well, I suppose so. We could not speak of it and then just see what happened. But I would feel bad. Well, considering that I have no idea what it is, I suppose you may as well come out with it. Hmm. Hmm. 
Well, I've tried to consider in what way I would broach this subject with you, but I'm not really one for words. So, put simply, when we reach Umbra, I regret to say that I will most likely kill you. Oh. Yes. I had a similar reaction when I thought on it as well. Well, uh, you know, certainly not looking forward to being killed by a giant. Uh, may no. I ask your reasoning? Well, we had spoken before about your intentions. And if you are successful in your journey, then I will die. So if I am to be successful in my journey, then you must die. And I do not think the Magus, nor the Crab Man, nor the bird have it in them to kill you. So barring a tragic accident, I believe it falls in my hands. Well, that is certainly quite the conundrum, is it not? I agree. It's hard to know how to react, to be honest, when someone just comes right out and says they would like to murder you. Oh, I don't think I would like it at all. Mm. I like you, Fawn. In fact, I find myself somewhat interested in your absolutely admirable quest. To be clear, my goal... The Magus is going to Umbra to die. I am not hastening the act in any way. I am merely safeguarding the end of their trip so that it may end as they desire. Oh, indeed. And maybe I am going against the Magus' wishes. But I cannot die like this. Nor I... So... Perhaps it is better if the Magus is alive and unhappy. Well, you know for sure then that if the Magus dies, so do you. Well, do you know for sure if the Magus dies, you will have back your brother? I do not, but I am following the Magus's wishes. Hmm. You are flying in the face of them. That and yet you true. think that gives you the right to kill me. Oh. No, I don't have the right. It will be very much wrong. I suppose there's no way I can talk you out of it. Because again, you have not answered me as to how you are sure that you will die. I suppose we don't know what I will am happen. not. Are you a magic expert? Are you a magic historian? Do you have some sort of special knowledge of how magic works that I am unaware of? I only know that magic is dying. And me and my people are of that same source. We are magic as well. If it dies, everyone believes so shall we. Well, I certainly hope that is not the case. That I still would be don't best. see how killing me betters your situation in any way. Well, let us hope it does not come to this. But I wanted to tell you now, so that, at the very least, you knew it was not out of malice that I would do this. It certainly isn't very sporting. You are many times my size. I'm happy well, to I... take you on in combat, but it is quite an unfair advantage that you have, and thus would not be an honorable death that you visited upon me. No, that is true. We could fashion you some kind of stilts. 
Do I really need to explain to you the flaw in that plan? Listen, regardless, we could go about this all day. I certainly hope that you don't have to kill me or try to kill me. Um, And I certainly hope that you know that despite my diminutive size in comparison to you, I am quite the fearsome foe. Yes. And indeed, it may not turn out how you hope. No. Well, good. Something to think on, then. I suppose that's true. I guess, thank you for being being forthright. I don't know. Again, this is very strange. Thank you for receiving it graciously. Have a good night, Fawn. You too. It kind of just like lumbers off. Yeah, and she absolutely is like, she used up all of her like, like big girl juice doing that. <laughs> so she's like, <sighs> just a little bit. You, if you're getting threatened by a giant with that and you're that's, not afraid, come on. Yeah, that's a little bit. That big girl pants need to go on at that point for sure. <laughs> or possibly also the dark, the diaper. Anyways. Um, <laughs> yeah, <I was> like, <laughs> all right. So uh, I think that. Uh, I, I don't personally have anything particular that I want to do here. Um, so if somebody wants to grab Magus and move us on, I feel like if we're going to a certain person's hometown, maybe they should be the one in charge of Yeah, Magus, I was thinking about moving the Magus, so... I in the will... meantime, I will move off everybody's uh, tokens right. so that you can do that. Yeah. Thank you. So we have arrived at Istalia, which is this beautiful city on the coast. Um, high, roll, like very large towers with large banners, very, I, I guess, showy of this city's uh, status as sort of a mer- mercantile city, right? Um, as the Magus gets brought in, um, they they sort of ride whatever animals they have into the front of the town, and there's just a huge fanfare everyone is out and the gilded one which is the um the royalty that that sits here has made a huge show of their wealth and power welcoming the magus to their uh to their city and so uh what uh the magus as they ride in is sort of putting uh her hand into her, uh, her head into her hand, sort of shaking it, just not really wanting all of this pomp and circumstance for, for their arrival. Um, <laughs> and uh, from above the tower, you hear sort of the voice of uh, the the gilded one. Uh, would someone like to play that person, just sort of welcoming the Magus to the town? Sorry, what kind of person is it again? Uh, it's the, the ruler, the king or queen, I guess, uh, uh, of the town. Like, draped in gold and very fine clothes. Just way too much. <laughs> uh, uh, sure, why not? So, out of all of this fanfare, then their voice from the top of the tower. Hello and welcome. Hello. Well met. Well met indeed. You have certainly put on a great show, O Gilded One. I am certain it is still pales in comparison to what you deserve. Oh, thank you. Um, I take it that you have something planned for our stay until we set off for Umbra? Oh, um, I am, yes, I am quite sure. I do not make such plans, though. I leave that to my staff, who have been instructed to take only the best care of you and your guests. Thank you, Gilded One. And she lowers her head in deference, uh, simply because the Magus has humility. (laughs) Um, But what, I guess, 
that's sort of all I want is that the, it's this big fanfare into this city. Um, and I take it that they are given a room for the evening. Oh, of course. And then they are invited to a parade later on. Um, and indeed, it is sort of, we set up a, a, a very festive carnival, I'm told. I don't know what a carnival is. I've never seen one before, but uh, I'm told it is quite a raucous good time. All right. <laughs> I hope you enjoy yourself while you are here. If you happen to need anything, please feel free to let my, any member of my staff know. All right. And so that's sort of where I will end the scene. Thank you very much, Amanda, for, for doing that. I am very good at being curious. <laughs> I've, got, I've got the nose for it. It's a good like. It does cast a good profile. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So would anyone like to do some scenes here? Mm -hmm. Ah. Who is the candle? I don't even I don't remember anything. <laughs> I just I realized that I, I've been talking all this time, but I was muted, so you could not hear me. Uh, I want to do I want to do Starfall Academy, How You Fix What's Broken. I believe that Starfall Academy is it um, is Stalia's Magic Academy, mm -hmm. um, uh, but it is not the, quite the same caliber as the, cat, the, the Academy in Ravenhall. Uh, but is a sister school essentially. Oh, I mean, if you words. really, if you really want to get your your magic education, everybody's trying to get to Ravenhall. If you but want to, get to Ravenhall, true. Uh, but so this because is Yale. we have, yeah, <laughs> this is <laughs> Yale. So, uh, but because we are sister schools and we are all working towards the same purpose, uh, Caspian does decide to stop by and wants to speak to the. Um, Oh, what's the word for the provost? Is it the provost? Uh, the president of the school, essentially. The dean of the school. Um, that's the word I was looking for. So uh, they stop by the Starfall Academy, which is this grand, beautiful building made of like marble um, and like the finest stained glass and like masonry work has been done on the school to make it look grand and, and beautiful. And in comparison to the more well-loved uh, campus in Raven Hall, it is very obvious, like, we're, we're compensating for something here. Um, but yes, uh, Caspian, Caspian has, a, has a, an appointment with the Dean, if anybody would like to play my Dean. Yes. I'll play a Dean. Um... The dean of a very ostentatious and uh, university that is really trying to make up for something. Okay. Ah, uh, it is good to see you again, old friend. It has been some time. <laughs> oh, an absolute pleasure, Caspian. Great Raven of Ravenhall, it is always such an honor for you to come and grace our doors. Now, now, Joe, do all of that. We know exactly what you mean when you say all of that. You are telling me to stick it up my rear end, and I know it. Oh, I would never, I would never say such a thing to Balsio. such an important part. You get it. I do get it now. I have come to ask you what you know of the situation that has currently befallen our mages. Well, without having any direct access to the magus in recent years, we are limited in our scope, although our libraries are obviously quite vast and extensive, and we have a number of scholars who've been working on it and dedicated to the task. We have made a few discoveries. Do you wish to share them with me, Balcio? Oh, uh, yes, I suppose we could do that. Um, would you mind? They aren't entirely for public consumption. Maybe yeah. to my quarters? That works just fine for me, Balcio. Just fine. Whatever it is that you need in order to feel comfortable. Good, good. Yeah. And 
he kind of like opens his robes and inside is sort of like a star field. There's like no body and wraps you in his robes. And it's really way too showy. Like a transportation spell could just be done by being like bang. But it's just like, oh, wow. And, you and always had you a flair for the dramatic, Valcio. And you're in his quarters, which are sort of all like star magic and divination stuff and charts and astrolabes and stuff like that all that kind of makes stuff. sense for the uh, for the coastal city for such a thing to be yeah indeed ah uh, to study this guy i see fawn's brother has has uh, met up with her. <sighs> that's lovely i hope that she has a good time with him what is Fawn's brother's name? Just I can't remember. I, I'm sure I have it written down somewhere. But it doesn't... Oh, I don't think I, I. I don't think I ever like gave it. Um, this is Gabriel. Ah, Gabriel. Good. Fawn yeah. and Gabriel. Um, writing this down. Gabriel equals dog. Best. Um, best. Best. Well, Caspian. What I have to say is very dire indeed. So dire that it may in fact drive you mad. How do you know I'm not already there? Well, you'll be double mad. The Magus. Born of magic font of power into our world is dying. Yes, I do believe that is quickly becoming common knowledge, Falcio. Oh. Well, one other thing. This magus of ours our historians have cooked something up. Let me show you. He kind of pulls out a big tome and opens it up. And what you start to see is depictions of the Magus throughout the millennia. And as we know it, you know, the Magus appears differently to everyone, all different people. These representations of the Magus are consistent representations for entire peoples, for entire lifetimes. You don't say. I do say, Caspian. Our Magus has gone through many forms and many lives. And has finally begin, begun to reach the end of it. I do not know how to fix what is broken. Whatever it is, I fear it will be the undoing of magic for all peoples of this land. And if such a thing were to happen, both your academy and mine would fall to ruin. Who will do magic once the Magus is dead? None. But I can promise you this, Caspian. If magic does fall, you'll wish you had real estate like ours. <laughs> I hope you have some tea, old friend. We should have good long chat before I leave. Of course. And he like pulls out an amazing tea set with all of your favorite teas ready to go. Water already boiling. Oh, Balsia, what a silly man. All right. And I think that's my scene. Uh, we have a couple more possible locations people can visit in Estalia. Uh, I believe there is a plot yeah. point that must be resolved. Yeah, yeah. So, if does anyone else have something they want to do here? Uh, I do. I, I, I do want to point something out really fast. Uh, people might have noticed there is a mark on this section of the map, uh, which is something that we have not yet dealt with. So if somebody ends up choosing the Marketplace of Magic, we can get to that um, and let people know what it is. Can we just know what that mark means? Before we... um, <laughs> no. So the mark, the mark in and of itself means change. Right. So what that entails, we'll, can, we can go into more detail if somebody decides to chance it and 
head to the marketplace. But I like the idea of there being some mystery. Cool. I will say that if there's anybody who might want to experience a bit of change, Darthur is not the worst possible candidate. Oh, no, I, I, I wanted to. I just wanted to make sure. But, it but yeah, like I know Amanda thing. had something that yeah. she wanted. And to And I can, so I can do my thing as we're running out of the city as well. So cool. Yeah, because we're going to escape in case you guys didn't know. We're going to get out of here. Yeah. Don't worry, audience. We're going to take the tension right out for you. No we're going to get out of here. Us. Right. So, of the two of you who... Um, oh, me? Yeah, yeah, Amanda, Amanda, you, yeah, Amanda, you oh. said you had something you wanted to try? I do. Um, So, I'm going to go to... Ah, shoot. I'm going to go to the Badwater District. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, Fawn is taking a little detour uh, to do her job. Um, she is pursuing a minor magic user who's just a real POS um, and is uh, going to bring him justice. Indeed. So, uh, Max. <laughs> Am I a POS? That seems that seems uh, up your alley. I can back, yeah, oh yeah, happily. Uh, uh, all right, famed so, POS Max Isaacson. Famed, <laughs> Put it yes. on my business cards, kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, where do you think you are? I would like to. Um, all right, if we're in, well, we're in the Badwater District, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, the Badwater District seems like a pretty shady spot, um, and I would assume that I'm running a like a back alley kind of, like. When you would think of like a shady back alley doctor, but in magical times, you've got a shady back alley mage, and uh, and I'm running like a like a pretty like iffy potions business, mm. and uh, and there's been some fallout from my crap. So finding me, if you're a, a dum dum, is a little hard, but you know people in the neighborhood know me. All right. Uh... So having asked around uh, and maybe done some threats, uh, <laughs> done some threats, uh, Fawn has a pretty good idea of, uh, of where uh, Sager is um, and has found that particular back alley. Um, so you're doing your thing and you just start hearing this like scraping noise that just like, stops and starts in like rhythm you just hear this like it's like metal scraping on stone and that's because it's fawn's sword hitting the ground in time with her boots uh because she wants you to know that she's coming she's out of out she's not wearing her uh like night out she's dressed pretty normally okay. um so but comes up so what do you got tonight what do you want tonight kid you name it i got it any little sin under the sun what are you drinking kid huh certainly not one i've heard lately ah, you know. i try and be polite <sighs> do you um, well, what do you what do you want? I'm not the busiest man in town, but I got business. Oh well, I'm so very sorry to be taking up so much of your time. I am a new customer, as you may recognize. You seem like a man who remembers faces. I sure do. I got an infinite memory. It's a little specialty of mine. It's a curse, really. I mean, there are worse things to have as a talent. Um, although, I will say that I don't think you're very good at it. I take personal offense. And she just kind of leans up real close and grabs you by the scruff yeah. of the neck. We've met before. Oh, really? You remember? Can't say that I do. Do you remember, uh... Do you remember that, uh couple uh 
over in Stormguard sold them. They wanted to kind of spice up their marriage a little bit. They had a they had a kid yeah. recently, uh, and you sold them something to, uh, you know, help them out a little bit. Except, all right. Oh yeah. Except, you killed them because they died from whatever it is that you gave them, and and that was something like the fifth or sixth death in the last eighteen months that all can be traced back to you. Hmm. What uh, do you have to say to that? Because I like to say that maybe you should reap what you sow, my friend. Look. I don't know what to tell you. I got a bad batch of uh, Ayanut. That wasn't on me. That's on my supplier. When I mix it in, I do the recipe right. I sell it. What am I going to do? Drink all my own horny potions and go hump everything I got? Then what can I sell? That's that not on like me. That sounds like a great idea, supplier. actually. That sounds like a great idea. Why don't you oh. sample your own supply? Lady? What are you doing for the next half an hour? Excuse me? I don't know. I'm just saying. You're the one who told me to try it. Is this a thing that's happening? Is this like a thing that's happening? Are, are you freaking serious? I don't know. You're the one who's got me by the scrub telling me to drink horny potions, okay? Okay. I'm... All right. I've had it. Okay. You know what? Okay. I'm, I'm going to start just like, I keep, start like fiddling with my hands, like behind me, trying to like reach for something. I'm like trying to and like she grab can a tell. potion bottle. Like, she sees it ah. and she immediately stabs you in the, through the heart. Huh? Oh, shit. That's what happens. Oh, that was... <laughs> when... <laughs> oh, damn it, Max. Oh, damn it. Damn it, Max. Stole my last line thunder, you jerk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nope, never mind. Doesn't do that. What was it? <laughs> Too late, you POS. <laughs> Living up to the hype. I'm now just going to hide from Amanda for all to be, time. No, to be honest, I was still waiting for the brilliant line to come to me, and it wasn't coming, but I was like, mm, just give me another so second. Maybe- no, it's, that's when you drink the horny juice. Well, <laughs> in your bag. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> ta-da, ta-da, that's a scene. And actually, before we get started with the next scene, we're we're actually going to uh, stop here to take uh, a ten minute break. But before we do that, we have a, a message in the bottle from uh, our friend Mini Marker, who thank you so much for the donation. By the way, has left us a little message. So if you want to raise your glass, Mini Marker leaves this toast for us: Happy Pride, y'all! Yay, Pride! Pew 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 pew. Thanks for fun games. Thank you for coming and supporting fun games. We appreciate you very much. Um, Don't forget, everybody, before we go on break, that we are doing a giveaway today. If you are interested in getting yourself some free dice from Die Hard Dice, make sure to press exclamation point raffle, and then the number is 1 through 10. You can buy up to 10 tickets uh, if you're a follower, and if you are a subscriber, you get a bonus 30 tickets. So maybe consider hitting that subscribe button before entering the raffle uh but uh we'll be back at about five past the hour and until then everybody uh we'll see you in a few minutes get up stretch take some drink some water or horny juice whatever okay
and welcome back everyone to the second part of fall of magic here on all games no masters we are just coming back from our break and i think we're gonna pick up right where we left off without much further ado but before we start remember we are doing a giveaway of die hard dice in chat if you want to enter that giveaway make sure to hit exclamation point raffle and a number between one and ten uh, if you are a follower if you are a subscriber you get a bonus 30 raffle tickets so maybe consider hitting that subscribe button before you enter the giveaway if you want some dice that's what's going on and moving on we are currently in Astalia. you know we are you know hanging out by the sea it's real nice real chill um, but i do believe we have one more scene before we move on from this place yeah so it's gonna have to do with uh darthor and um what i would like to start with is uh it's sort of just saying i think the mages and and, and team mages and crew uh have been in Astalia for what feels like the longest week of all time like wherever they go people are following them they keep trying to get passage on a passing ship and it is there's just always a reason that something can't happen um and so Darthor is beginning to uh to understand what sort of bringing the mages here and what that could mean um, and that the mages will die if they don't uh, get going. So uh, he is in this market of magic, which is uh, a marketplace of magic, which is just <clears throat> this grand, open, big marketplace. It's, it's usually very bustling um, and um, he is trying to contact uh some some people some smugglers <laughs> but he's also not very good at it and yeah oh i have an idea yep i would like to do this scene with you because i have an idea okay, okay. Let's do so it. as darthor is attempting to make contact with his with 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 any smugglers um he notices in the periphery of this of his vision a small hunched over hooded figure uh, a gnarled hand wrapped around uh, a cane that is as gnarled as like it almost as look looks as though the hand becomes the cane they're the same color the same kind of like gnarled texture um this this little old lady has become one with her cane she has dark you know skin um she sort of peers up uh at you through her hood uh, her hood she kind of you know catches your attention with a, with a small wave that kind of like beckons you to follow um she seems to be standing near like a small alleyway all right i guess we're doing this then <clears throat> uh, hello uh, all right um, listen very closely young I see the darkness of your aura. You carry within your heart a lie, and you have not found a way to admit it. And it will surely catch you out if you do not mend your ways. Um, all right. Not quite the conversation I thought this was going to be. Um, Indeed, I can see it in your face. You were not expecting the consequences of your cunning to catch up with you. Um, no, I, I actually, I, I tend to bumble in and things catch up with me all the time. But uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to do what I think is right. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to help them. That cannot be accomplished in the current state you are in. What? In order, to, in order to succeed, you must first lose something you hold in your heart. That desire to be the most sought after, the most beloved, by any means necessary that 
curdles within your blood. It is the price you must pay to lose that cunning that we believe gives you an edge. A strange oh. price, I know, but a price you must pay nonetheless. Uh, okay. Weird person with <laughs> the, the stick on your hand. She, like, whips it up into her hand and kind of flaps you on the forehead oh. with it. Respect. I understood. Oh, respect. Got it. Um, why? What? I mean, okay. I'm supposed to give up what I've been working my entire life for. Cool. That makes total sense, I guess. Um, you believe that losing this will endanger your entire career. Do you not understand there are other ways to get what you want that don't involve hurting the people around you? No. There, I will say that you are wrong. Because whatever I do, it's going to hurt people around me. Either I turn my back against everything that I've learned, everything that I've worked so damn hard to, to, to come for, or I give up the one person who saved my life, who accepted me for the stupid fool that I was. So no, it's not just the easy choice for me. It's not supposed to be. It is all right. Let's say that I were willing to pay this price. What would, what would I need to do? I think you should be a bit more bold for one and two the people that you are meeting with they have ulterior motives you will be tempted to use your cunning to outwit them but that will only place you in more danger you must put on a different face uh, uh, okay um there are many cases in which honesty might be the better way All right. Thank you. Your hand. And he reaches his hand very carefully. <laughs> she like grabs it like harder than you expect her to grab it, withdraws a small knife and slashes across your palm. What? And then tips the the your tips like the blood into the dirt. And then lets you go and like kneels down and like with their thumb, her thumb starts pushing this blood through the dirt, like with like, like kind of a runic sort of incantation like thing. And she's murmuring over them, and you watch as the 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 runes glow and burn into the dirt. And there's some strange weight that suddenly lifts from your chest. This need to please everyone who's more powerful than you. This this uh, constant anxiety that you're not doing your job well enough or that you're you're beholden to a specific way of thinking. Like it is not pot like this this notion that you cannot change or be anything different kind of just floats away from you in that moment. And you you now uh, this leaf here um, is a uh, it signifies change specifically. Uh, before you end your turn, you change or remove something from your note card. This could be your name, your title, or a trait, and then describe why your character thinks this is true. All right, right, right. So uh, I got change your name. Yeah. Oh, I can tell you exactly why he's going to have to change his name. So um, he is. Uh, a crab singer of Vistalia, um, or was, because he, after feeling that weight lift from his shoulders, the determination that he cannot um, let the Magus die here, at least. We must finish this journey to Umbra. Um, it's just a decision that he has decided to make. And so he is going against all of the crab singers and 
will lose all of his status and whatever story he tries to write will be never like it, they're they're going they, they have the funds to stop it from ever seeing the light of day and so he's giving that up um and his cunning um because what you can only lose one of them okay yeah cunning is the only oh oh or my name yeah so that's what i'm losing i'm losing my yeah. my name so, so my stat any status that he thought he had now has not so sad <laughs> cool all right oh uh, wait can i wait how do i do that oh wait you know what there is something for this there is a new token that you can do but all right um, so cool you did your scene and now we're gonna move the make so as a result of this change for Darthor, it becomes very apparent that if we don't get out of here fast, things are going to get bad. So we have managed to bribe some smugglers into, um, or we've managed to bribe, you know, somebody into letting us on our boat, and we leave Estalia on the sea wing. Um, the captain of this ship is named Grandmother Black, who. Uh, looks suspiciously like an old gnarled crone, um, but unhooded, like very, like uh, also very much like a halfling kind of height, uh, a very stout, a uh, very light footed halfling in this case. Um, the hair has kind of been, is, is a dark rough brown that looks bleached with the, by the sun and like loose curls. And I'm kind of trying to think like very, uh, would be good like maybe um gosh uh selma uh like very selma sort of like halfling half like selma hayek if if she were if she were half like kind of um yeah i am into it yeah <laughs> but uh a grandmother obviously so it, it imagine her about like 30 years older than she is now she probably is going to she looks exactly the same as we yeah (laughs) it's it's gonna be gorgeous and it's gonna be a problem but she uh immediately welcomes welcomes us onto her ship um hides us in the hold until we're well away from shore um and makes sure that we are safe um the ship is like what you see here on the um map a three mast uh is it two mast? it's two mast um full sail kind of galleon sort of structure it's a big ship um and it moves through the sightless sea and uh now we have uh time for some scenes if anybody wants to talk about this boom uh i'm gonna do a i have a, a small little thing that i can uh, do here hold on move myself well yeah how's the giant uh, doing on the boat well, uh, I'm going to put myself here in the cabin, but I'm, that's a bit of a, a lie because I can't really fit in a cabin, per se. So I think where they've got me is um, is in, like, the hold in the middle of the boat. And, you know, some of these holds, they load in from the top. They can, like, open a kind of grate and, like, load stuff down. And they've just opened the top, so I'm just standing in there, and my head's poking out onto the deck of the ship and I'm just like but I'm like standing in the middle of the boat I'm just kind of like hey. uh, and and because of it because I can't really do anything to help on the boat because I'm so lumbering and huge but I'm also just stuck in the middle of the thing what Leaf has started doing is just like singing sea shanties with the crew and being and like trying to just like kind of have fun and like you know he'll like pick up a whole barrel of ale and like drink the whole thing and be like you know sing the wellerman or whatever the hell they're singing in those days you know um and so i think at at the very least that's his experience on this on this vessel is that he's just a giant singing drunken head for the entire thing i'm into it you're lucky while you're stuck there. Fawn doesn't like stab you repeatedly in the in like the ear canal or something. <laughs> I take that as a kindness. <laughs> well, Perfect opportunity. 
I think uh, our Raven has been making their, uh, um, taking their time enjoying the crow's nest. Uh, their cousin Corbett. Um, they hang up out up there, sort of like watching the stars at night and uh, looking out over the horizons during the day. Um, and they've, they've, you've, you've, You've noticed that they've spent most of their time on this journey, mostly like uh, count, like consult, consulting with the mages and like up in the crows. But they have not been particularly social during this time. Um, every time you try to talk to them, they kind of nod politely and sort of, you know, wave you off like as though they're a bit preoccupied. Um, and then maybe a couple of days into the journey, you know, you find out the reason why he, they've been doing this is because they have very bad seasickness and they're afraid if they talk or open their mouth, they'll get sick all over you. So they've just been avoiding contact with people. And uh, that's that's what's up with, uh, with Caspian. I'm into it. I don't have anything in particular that uh, is grabbing me this time. Same, same. Well, then, if we want to, we can oh, move. Um, oh, you got something? No, I want to see the islands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I was thinking anybody who wants to can move the Magus along to our first, one of our first islands. I haven't done the Magus yet, so why yeah, not? go for it. Yeah. Oh, no. What have I done? <laughs> All right. So you have moved us to the first island. So what you're going to do is that there are some cards down there in the bottom right corner. Word. You're going to draw two of them. You're going to use one and you're going to discard the other. Two. Okay. Um, I now have two of these island cards. I'm going to... Ooh. Hello. Hmm. All right. And... Oh, I guess, should I say it out loud or? Yeah, you have to put, like, maybe put it down on the board for us somewhere. Uh, maybe where, like, just use the part of this, the um, map that maybe just like... says the style of the seat. No, I mean, like, do you, do you want to hear both of them or just the one that I pick? Uh, give us just the one that you pick. Yeah, okay. Um... <sighs> just pick one. <laughs> Flip for it. They're good. I, oh, I don't have anything to flip. Um, okay, no, you know what? Okay, we're gonna do. Gonna do the Dread Calm, uh, a windless fortnight, uh, cabin, your pers your personal space, captain's quarters, a law of the sea, galley, who goes hungry, crow's nest, an unwelcome companion. And the bow superstition. So, oh. um, I don't know where that. Should, I'm just gonna leave it here just for now. Um, and so I guess it's uh, a windless fortnight. Um, I think the uh, the uh, the magus can't sleep. So they are wandering around the ship in the middle of the night like a ghost, essentially. Um, and they uh, come across, let's see. Caspian, are you out? Were you, did you say you were out? Up on no, top of the ship? Yeah, they've, they've been up in the, the, the crow's nest. They, they don't really go much elsewhere. Okay. So yeah, crow's nest. They would definitely be out on the deck of the ship, essentially. Um, okay. Um, so I think she goes over to the crow's nests and uh, and and calls up Caspian. Will you come down? Of course, Vegas. Give me just a moment, and Caspian will kind of not really climb. Like they'll they'll spread their arms out and like they'll kind of glide down using the using their their wings. 
It is nice. Is it hard on a windless Fortnite? Sorry, I just really needed to know. It's a little bit more difficult to control the descent, yes. You, I think, more than any of the others, understand this ill omen. I feel it, I feel it, down to my toes. We will need wind soon, or else we might miss it, whatever it is. Oh, there's really no avoiding it. That's why I am heading toward it, to meet it. But a delay is worrisome. And this Ah. is ill omen. Perhaps it is worth me expending a little of my strength to move us along. Oh, that is not why. That is not why I called you down. I just, well, I believe we are the only two who are awake on this entire ship. Even the giant has managed to fall asleep with his head poking out in the middle of the ship. It is quite the sight, is it not? And the sound, indeed. Song logs. <laughs> I, uh, I hope that my feeling is wrong. I hope that this is just a strange quirk of the re- of the weather. But, I share your hope. But lived, we have lived long enough to be concerned. So, and so I walk, and I think. I walk and I think, and not sure any of it accomplishes much at all, but it does make me feel a little better to be doing something while this boat sits here doing nothing. Would you watch the stars with me, Magus? I would like that very much. It is better from the Oh my god, I just forgot all of the words for that are about boats. The business. The best place is actually at the stern, I in my estimation. Shall we? Then let us I will be here with you until the end. The end. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, now we have some areas on this card that can be, so I'm going to move this down here towards where the island is. Um, Hopefully that's okay. Uh, Who who would like to have a scene on this, uh, this first island? Anybody feeling something super strong? Oh no, I picked the wrong card. No, no, you're good. Uh, I would... Um, so just so would... that you're aware, you can't put your, your token directly on the card. It'll, it'll, it'll show up. Un- it will end up under it instead. So, ah. uh, I would be interested in, in the bow. Cool. Go for it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, at, at the bow of the ship... Um, Well, obviously, <laughs> Leaf isn't doing a ton at the bow of the ship, but, um, you know, we haven't moved in, in a couple of weeks now. You know, this is a very dead couple of weeks here. We're sort of sitting in the water, and all of the sailors are a very superstitious lot, and they believe that we're sort of cursed, uh, even as the, you know, and the Magus walking around at night and all of these kinds of things and these ghostly apparitions that really are the Magus are all uh, freaking them out uh, pretty badly. Um, And so they're all sort of huddled around the bow of the ship. And and just so that I, because I know know fuck all about ships. Bow of the ship is where, is like the front where you have the- um, Stern, port, starboard. Yeah, okay. 
Good. So they've got that kind of like carved um, what's it, you know, that, that oftentimes you see like a mermaid or something, but sometimes it's all whatever that is there to like keep the ship very safe, kind of protect it in, in evil waters. Um, so I would think that on on the sea wing, it is a, a bird like, uh, you know, creature, uh, maybe some kind of a griffin or something like that. Um, and so they're all kind of leaning forward and kind of praying to it and like giving it offerings and maybe like giving it a kiss and, and rubbing it on it. Um, and Leaf sees them all doing this and sees Darthor there kind of making note of, of these these moments. Um, and so he kind of calls over. Him. Oh. Storyteller. Yes, giant. What are they doing? It is a belief among their people um, that kissing this image will bring good luck to the ship, that it will aid them in breaking the curse that they believe falls upon us. It is not but a superstition, as there are many legends that go otherwise, but they refuse to listen. (laughs) <laughs> I could have told them the same. I have kissed many pieces of wood, and none of them ever gave me anything but splinters. <laughs> you are full of surprises. Well, yes, that has been said, but rarely in terms of sneaking up. Mostly in what I say. I can be heard a mile away, you know. Ah. Uh. Yes. Uh, and he, he sort of looked around and he's looking at sailors who are like looking back at, <laughs> at us talking. Um, but uh, good friend, Leaf, uh, you, you need not call me storyteller anymore. Oh. This is for me. It has no more purpose. There is no more story to tell. I find that hard to believe. We are still here on our journey. Yes, we are. And And is it not interesting what we have done? Some would say so. Others would say not. Who's to tell? Well, you, I suppose. (laughs) Maybe at one time I could have been, but... As you know, I no longer can claim to be a part of the Crab Singers, and oh. without without their power, I am a nobody. Someone from a poor family in Istalia who made a name for himself and then threw it all away. It's, it's almost as fruitless as being on this ship. Yes. You know... I am also not a crab singer. I do not know if you knew this. No, pray tell. I I would love to know more. Yes. I am not one. Nor have I ever been. I can still tell a story. Yes, but who will listen? Well, maybe you. Or maybe the bird or the knight. Maybe, if it is a good enough story, everyone on the boat will come and listen to me tell it. And then they will tell it to other people on another boat. Do you understand what I mean? I believe so. I believe that you believe that i'm i'm afraid that i will leave this world and be not but a fool uh, someone who isn't remembered by the histories That's oh. all I wanted, you see. I well i stories to live past me i do not know about that but i do know this believing in the stories you tell and what it is that you do 
is a much wiser thing than kissing a piece of wood. So, I would do what you're doing instead of what they're doing. Thank you, gentle giant. I needed oh. to hear that. Good night. I think that's a good wrap for that scene. Think that island. All right. Uh, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna go to the second island. Ah, you gonna pull it Second. And I'm gonna pull two cards here. This is a very cool mechanic, by the way. I like this little. No surprise by anybody. But I like this little bit of chaos. Um. But I just like the idea of like you can read the whole map, but then there's just this piece of it where you're like, I don't know, like I, these are the whole anything. whole thing, yeah. It's well, and it's it's great because the the replayability is obvious too. Yeah. You know, like it's just because it, depending on your character, you interpret things different ways. You as a person interpret the prompts different ways. It's just like to me, like oh. I've never. Sorry, I've never seen so like anything like that where it was like, here, come to this place. Here are your prompts, you know, and like, right. I've just never played a game like that before. So um, it's really, it's really kind of nerve wracking for me because <laughs> there's just not a lot there, right? There's not yeah. a lot there. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, ah, that's what my insides were doing. Um, and uh, yeah, but that's why collaborative games are the best. Well, we're, we're headed to the Drowning Library. Ooh. Ooh. I saw Amanda the is like, yep. Yes. So <laughs> upset by this. Just. Um, and uh, it is, the prompt is the language of the curators. So as, as the wind finally does pick up and begin to blow, casting your ship along to yet another island that appears to rise from the sea uh slightly lop like it looks like it's slightly lopsided and then you realize it's because it almost is carved like the island is carved into the very stone which the island is made and so it is a very kind of free form carved structure um that it's 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 being dashed by the rock uh, by the water constantly it is a very it is a walk a rock that is always wet um but like um yeah you can you can hear from the island as you draw closer the sound of singing like choral singing as though uh, almost in a monastery like fashion they kind of uh curate their books to with music um but they are um I'm going to say, so you know how you see, it looks like little towers with like windows at the top that look a little bit like eyes. I'm actually going to say that is what the denizens of the drowning library look like. Um, you see them kind of in the water as well, but the, 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 the denizens of the drowning Ro library look like they are made of the stone of the island as well. And they move around kind of like this. They're, they can shrink and, and grow in size that can be as big or as little as they want. So you see lots of little tiny ones running around. You see the big, huge ones up in the sky. Like they, they are constantly sort of morphing as they move along uh, through whatever space happens to be. Some of them are just stationary, just like chill. Um, and uh, the, the language that they seem to speak, they don't speak the language, they sing a language. And it kind of sounds like the wind going through like going over stone like those eyes are actually like kind of hollow almost like windows and the wind blows through them and kind of makes like these they're like sentient rock people with holes in them they're that, like, like flute wind flutes. people yes that's what they are they're flute people the language of the curators is like this flute like singing like choral singing that you constantly hear and it's very cool that does sound very cool very happy with these people yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> So who, who wants to hang with them? Yeah, who wants to do <laughs> I, a scene? I do want to do a scene. Um, and I would like to do it with 
Aki. Cool. Uh, or more specifically, Caspian. Um, and also it, cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so let's grab the little thing. I am I know we can't put it on it, but I'm going to put it near it. So at the ancient graffiti. So um, I imagine there is a section of the drowning library that is just these giant uh, wall sort of sketchings and drawings um some that with age have been like molded over and, and covered with vines and and things in this older part of the library with a lot of these like loop people sort of i imagine them moving and moving kind of like not like steps but more like a smooth hover mm -hmm, kind of like mm -hmm. slow yeah down. it's perfect and sort of like going around and just sort of maintaining the library and, and being kind of creepy at the same time, but cool. Oh yeah, they're they're super creepy cool. Uh, and so uh, it is, um, it is, they uh, both Caspian and Darthor are are searching this part of the library where they come across one of these wall portraits, and it is, um, it shows a few um, different people who over seeing them a couple of times you see they are changing shape potentially um but um as they go towards the right of the mural it is harder and harder to see them but they seem to be getting smaller and smaller and then whatever's on the far side you can't see so um darthor is there with his book thank you for the raid evandale oh thanks um so ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, caspian caspian yes yes you are quite are you all right doctor this place is amazing there are stories here that i've never heard there's a story about this baker and like how he fed a million towns it's 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 all it's, it's very entertaining, but, and this is why I've called you over, because I, I don't know the tales that you are taught in Ravenhall, but what would you make of this? And he points at the mural. Ah, oh, interesting. Yes. What would I make of this? Well, I would... There are many origin stories for this land where we come from, who we are, who we are going to be. Perhaps this is a glimpse of what this society believes to be the truth. Those questions. Yes. Yes, but what... This is on the way to Umbra. This is probably closer than any other story we've heard on the origins of magic. Maybe, maybe this is similar to the story of the Magus. Have, have you heard anything like that? And he's ready to jump. There are certain questions we have never asked the Magus for reasons that I think perhaps might make sense to you in the long run. Some stories, it's not that they shouldn't be told. It's not that people shouldn't know about them. They must be discovered uh, through experience. And I believe that on the path we are walking, that experience will come soon enough, Darthor. And wouldn't you rather be able to experience it fresh? Yes, that is a good idea. But what if we could figure out how to make it end in the right way, if you know what I mean. And by that, I mean the Magus not done. Do you know that the Magus is fully prepared to die? Should that be the necessity? But then why come all this way? Because we do not know what lies beyond the glow. We can only guess. And so, without knowing, we must prepare for every contingency and be happy with either result. Either way, the world will move on. Magic will live, magic will die. It will live and die again, just as all things do. 
Well, then I have a question for you, Good Raven. What do you do if magic dies? You are, in, in uh, and of yourself, a student of the magical arts, no? Oh, I'm still young. I can be a student of anything I want. But you're more than halfway transformed. Yes, I am. But I do not think that is much to be concerned about. What will happen to me will happen to me. If I die, I have lived a long life and accomplished many a great thing. If I live, then I shall work to accomplish even more. Okay. I am me, regardless of my powers or abilities. This is not me. This is me. And this is me. That is enough. I like that. Thank you. You are welcome, young one. And he just continues to stare at the prophecy. I think that's uh, where that ends. <laughs> I want to live on this island. All of the prompts are so cool. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. One thing we didn't do is what is the language of the curators? Oh, we, we talked about that. It's oh, the sorry. flute sorry, sorry. like it's the the flute 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 thing. singing. Yeah. Oh, they speak in like this, like sing, like this fluty sing song That's kind so cool. of way. It's very Anybody else have love to give in the drowning library? Or are we moving on to the next one? That was me. <laughs> you're good. You're good. I want to like at some point I might play a game with with friends that just is the islands because they are they, they seem really cool. Oh, it's a neat idea. <laughs> it's just like we're just gonna do the islands. We're just gonna hang out over here. But yeah. If if anybody we can't hear you, Amanda. You're muted. That's because the dog was barking. Um I, I said um you I'm mean cool Gabriel? With, mo yes. I'm cool with uh just moving. Um, ready to go? All right, cool. Uh if you guys ever want to learn more about the Ammonite stacks or the shores of remembrance, pick up Fall of Magic. Yeah, right, I do. Uh, I know. This is a really cool the, here we go. We 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 end here. We're done now. We just Skip we the rest of the day. <laughs> stay on this card forever. All right. uh, who is feeling moved to move the Magus? Um, I don't think I've moved the Magus yet. I'll move the Magus. Cool. I can do a Magus move. Go ahead and then draw two cards, please. And... Boink. Uh, all right. Draw two. Play down deep inside me. Okay. Which one will you pick? I don't know. Oh. I'm excited to find out. Okay, well, that's interesting. Half of me being on these streams is just seeing what weird ass faces I can make and then <laughs> just enjoying myself immensely while I do it. Like, somebody, somebody invite me to do a stream where I'm just like, I'm just gonna like, just in your face it. Mm. Mm. Hemming and <laughs> I'm gonna do this one. Okay, okay. Yeah, there was a lot. These are all very cool. Um, okay, we're doing the Heron Islands. Mm, okay. Um, so uh, the Heron Islands are a series of kind of very small, very rocky islands, um, and as we sail past them. It's kind of, it's the middle of the day. It's like high noon. It's very, very bright out. And the Magus comes out on deck and everything is totally silent on the, on the islands and on the water. You know, and we're, we're cutting through, but there's just nothing to be seen. And the Magus comes out and stands in a very specific spot and fixates their gaze on the islands and is just kind of watching and waiting and everyone's like working and doing their things and the magus just doesn't move this way wait, waiting and waiting and everyone's sort of like trying not to bump into the magus as they're running around like getting the rigging together and getting stuff you know tied down and yada 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 doing all the sailorly business and the magus waits waits and then right as the sun 
crests to its highest when it reaches kind of perfect noon. The entire top of the islands just explodes outwards and up, right? And it's covered. And what we realize is the islands are just covered in birds, in these kind of bird-like creatures, these like kind of almost like harpies. Uh, and they're these long-necked kind of bird heads with these beautiful, slender, humanistic bodies and these long kind of talony wings. And thousands of them, thousands and thousands, just explode out as the sun crests. And they all start doing this kind of perfect, like, sun-worshipping dance in the air. They form these intricate spiraling patterns like fire moving through the sky, and they form these circles, you know, kind of worshipping this orb that kind of spins and spirals in on itself. And everything feels almost entropic and chaotic, but it's all around these kind of universal forms of the sun. Um, and as the Magus just kind of watches and takes in the beauty of this naturalistic moment, everyone on the crew sort of stops and slows and watches the dance of these birds. And then just as quickly as it all end, as it all started, all of the birds kind of coalesce together and almost like someone dropped a bucket of water on the islands, they just fly straight down and just spread out everywhere and just reskin the islands with, with their feathers and themselves. And the Magus kind of turns and heads back down below. Um, so that's uh, says we pa we're passing the Heron Islands. Pretty cool. Um, I think I would like to take a scene on the island. Um, I think um, Caspian is going to be here at the Rookery. Um. They, uh, they go to this rookery and um, they, as they're standing there among the birds, um, they pluck from their arm one of their own feathers and hold it up to them as an offering. Um, as the light of magic dims, so too of this. I know that my brothers in Crown Hall once protected these islands and all of you, but they are gone now, and this is all we have left. What power is in this feather, I leave here with you so that you and your children and your children's children can continue to glorify this island with your presence. They place the, fe the feather down in the rookery and the feather has like a faint white glow to it that uh, doesn't show in all of the the iridescent shine of, of Caspian's feathers, but like one once plucked from their, their being seem to actually carry in them some, some small magical charge and they leave this little piece of themselves and their power with the the birds of in the rookery on the Heron Islands. Uh, probably these this rook palace of the island, in a way, it's it's where like the oldest and most royal of the birds live. Um, but yeah, I think uh, unless we have any other scenes. You're, you're muted again, Amanda. Damn it, I'm so mad at this today. I just want to do like a really quick one, if that- Yeah, if go for it. Uh, okay, so, um, there's my token. Where did you go? Uh, oh shoot, might be up in the top. I know, it's just not letting me grab it. I don't know what's happening. Let her have her token. Shoot, what is yeah, happening? Nice. Okay, I, I can't literally can't move it. Can someone? Right. Move it? I, I I can I can rejoin as the GM and move it for you. Where do you want me to move it to? Uh, to the cliffs. Cliffs. Um. Drove you. Okay, you rejoined as what? 
I know. I've committed oh, the no. most mortal, of, like, terrible of crimes for this game. So, uh, Fawn has been listening a lot to conversations that have been going on between the, all of the birds group. And um, she heads for just the highest point uh, of the island that they're on because she has heard um, from one of the birds that if you, on a good day, if you look very, if you look way into the distance, you can actually see Umbra. Um, and she stands there and she looks and she looks and it's a really clear day, but she just can't quite make anything out. Um, but she can feel it. Um, she can feel that, that that some kind of end is coming. Um, but especially after conversation uh, with Leaf, um, she's uncertain whose end it's going to be. Um, and she does not like being uncertain. So she's pretty much just standing there, heart in hand, just desperately hoping for the best right. and kind of just sending it out over the water toward Umbra, hoping that it makes it there. Uh, yeah, hoping that it makes it there. That her hope for everything to go well and to not end in disaster because she's come too far. <laughs> they are enough. And I think with that... We will now move mm -hmm. on. On the other side. We're on the other oh. side. We have made it to the other side of the sightless sea. Who would like to move the Nimbus into the ruins of Crow Hall? Well, I mean, I think there's only one Corvid whose job that should be. Yeah, I think you're right. So, um, as, we, as the islands slip out of sight behind us, um, and we travel back to the shore. We arrive at what feels like a very strangely familiar looking place. And most people have never been here before, but there are legends of a kingdom that was once even grander and more uh, prominent than even Ravenhall. Uh, mostly due to its proximity to where magic was born. Um, and this place was called Crow Hall. And it is here, it is from here that the Magus actually uh, originates as far as like they started their life here. Um, and so when you reach the, the gates of this place, it is the Magus that turns to all of you. I wish to welcome you to my home, the place from which I, well, it all began here, or at least close to here. Unfortunately, there's not much left of what was once my home, but I have enough power yet to give you the welcome you all deserve. So. If you would do me the great honor of being my guests tonight, I would pass my final days among friends. Of course, mages. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. they lead you through the corridors of this, uh, through, first through the empty streets and then through the corridors of what had to have been some grand hall and uh when you reach the dining room of this hall it is almost as if a wave of power rushes before you and when you open the doors prepared on the table is a wide array of food and you see the magus lean heavily on caspian as they as they uh, expel this power from themselves to create this feast for all of you um but yes, your night or nights spent 
in the ruins of Crow Hall are hosted by the Magus themselves. Um, and yeah, you feel that you're close to something like they seem more powerful here, but also by comparison, you can see the ravages that that power is starting to have on them. Um, almost like the last ekings of something. They seem simultaneously invigorated and yet exhausted. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking at the prompts in this place. They're they're so fucking grim. Yeah, <laughs> we have taken a turn. The story has has a uh, has um flipped the script. Yeah, I'm kind um, of like, oh, I have to think of a bad thing. Okay. Hmm. I think it's about time I switch my token. Hmm. Because with the expel the expulsion of the Magus's power and their subsequent weakening, you see a, dis a diminishing happening in Caspian as well. And I am going to choose um, the Sculpture Gardens. And I would... Uh, I would love for this to be a mirror scene to the last garden scene, which happened in Raven Hall, in which you were all invited to attend. And there was a discussion about our mission. I would love it if all of you would join me for this scene as well. But the Magus is resting and Caspian chooses, calls you all to the, the sculpture gardens, which are um, sort of this epic kind of garden of like, like uh, narrative sculpture is kind of happening. It's just like sort of like it tells the story of the dawn of magic. It tells the story of like the first Magus. Um, apparently this one is not the first one. Um, for Maguses can die like any other person if put to the sword um, or anything like that. They are as mortal as, as we are in that regard, but otherwise live in an infinitely long amount of time. So you see the story of the two or three Maguses that have gone before. Um, but yeah, Caspian meets you all. I want to start by saying thank you for the long journey you have accompanied us on. I believe we are growing closer to our, our uh, destination. And it cannot have... Uh, escaped your notice that the Magus has grown more drawn, though we are closer to the source of his power, she is still diminishing. I do not know how much further this journey will go. Perhaps we will find answers around the next corner. And perhaps beyond that, there are answers further to discover. But no one is beholden to the Magus beyond the place where magic was born. Well, we all knew where this was going to end and how it was going to end. It was not a surprise. We know what we, we signed. Not, we do not all know that, Vaughn. The Magus was very clear. No, the Magus could get to this, this, this place further in, and maybe, maybe they'll feel better. Maybe they'll, they'll, they'll get, gain the power that they need to, to keep going. You are a naive child. I'm not naive. I just have hope. I'm sorry that you have none. Oh, I have plenty. I just do not hope for the same things as you. Hmm. And you are both. Idealists and fools. And it is for the best to be that way. For otherwise, it's the death of dreams. I do not think it is possible for any of us to walk away completely satisfied with, with, 
whatever conclusion we are about to come upon, whatever it might be. And I believe we will all come away with this with questions and things that don't quite sit right with us. But that doesn't mean we have failed in our mission. That just means that we have time in our lives to discover those answers. And I think, well, for now, that is what we will have to be okay about. The idea that there is no perfect solution and no single correct answer. And what of you, Bird? I think it is good that I was able to go on this journey with all of you. Each of you have taught me something about the way magic has shaped this world for good or for ill. I am grateful for the time I have spent with each of you. You are all very powerful people in your own right. And you don't need magic for that. I don't think this world ever needed magic. But it had it. And now it is losing it. And perhaps that means it is ready to. And I know that means sad things for you and for me, Leaf. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Hmm. There are many forces at work in this world, not just magic. Faith, hope in whatever you believe in. Uh, Fawn is not really buying what you're selling, but she's a. Uh... <laughs> She's being real polite about it. <laughs> Still I think, uh, yeah, Caspian just kind of gives Fawn a knowing sort of smile and nod. Um, they're they're old. They know what what sm blowing smoke up people's ass looks like. So, <laughs> but yeah, and that's uh that's the oh, and now oh, I get to right. take I get to take a trait, and I believe that. Um, the trait I'm going to take for Caspian is doomed. Ugh, so dark and sad. Right. Where's my brother? Oh, I need my brother. I need so I cute, need... uplifting. Yes. Anybody else have an Gabriel idea? Gabriel also to get the tag. Ah, no. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, I want to pick some. Um, yeah, we can pick the same place more than once. Yeah. That is totally okay. Mm. If if the sculpture gardens are really speaking to you, you can use them. I I have one thought, although Amanda, if you've got an idea, please feel free. No, go for it, my dude. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the menagerie. Um, and the prompt here is a nightmare given form. Uh, and I think what I'd like to do is, is walk with, um, Darthor and Fawn. And as we're leaving Caspian, and we're kind of walking back and thinking on these ideas of hope and faith and what it is that we're trying to get, you know, what we're hoping to see happen here. We are moving through um, what clearly was once a, a absolutely gorgeous kind of resplendent menagerie and just, just wildly well tended and, and, and impressive. 
uh, now obviously gone to seed and kind of rotting and crisped by the sun and a, a wreck, you know, a, a skeleton of what it once was. Um, and as we walk through, we see the magus coming towards us. But now what each of us sees in the magus is our absolute most dreaded vision of what the magus represents and of what could come to pass. So I would ask both of you kind of what it is, what is what could the magus represent to you that is the worst possible uh, representation? Like just what they look like? Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously the magus can be many weird abstracted things as well, but yeah, like when they pass, you know, is it, um, who is the magus? What is the magus? You know, what does it look like? Yeah. If my, as part of, oh, I mean, that's easy as part of like a nightmare. Um, the Magus coming toward Fawn looks like, looks exactly like the, uh, the magic user, or I don't know, wizard, um, who, uh, turned her brother into a dog. <laughs> like for sure, looking like healthy and hale and robust, um, and just like clearly just brimming with bursting with magic um, so, and just coming toward her like nothing is like everything's fine all right uh for darthor i would uh i think it would be a form that is very emaciated very like hair stringy like very almost like a zombie like figure but um, what sticks out to him is that in where the eyes should be is a black hole of nothingness, just no joy, no, like magic for him has been part of all of the stories and the adventures that he's told. Um, and so a world without that magic for him would be just dull and lifeless and the Meg is on the verge of death right there just for once uh this man who likes to talk a lot is just at a loss for words um and i would say that for leaf probably much to his own surprise it's not something that he even really understood in himself uh sees the magus looking like fawn but fawn with a sword coated in giant's blood you know clearly after a battle beaten bruised you know some traumatic and carrying a small dog um, and so it's fawn in a world where nothing has changed for her and yet everything has changed for everyone else. Uh, and so he looks at that and sees a future that could be absolutely terrifying. Uh, and I think as the Magus passes, each of us has our visions. And I can tell you that Leaf does not want to talk about that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, they are very much team. three people that are like walking together, but aren't <laughs> together at all. <laughs> We're three little islands, like drifting along together, just separate. <laughs> together, but apart. All right. I like it. All right. Anybody else feeling something in here? I'm, I'm feeling actually... like moving on. Cool. Does anybody want to move the Magus? No, especially not at the it end. Feels like too much responsibility. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, all right. Um, <laughs> I mean, wait, wait, no. Listen, what, you got it. You got uh, it. Where magic was born. 
Oh. So we have some choices once we get to this, because I don't know if you see this, but there's also a little tiny path that comes off the globe called that that's a fiend thing. If we wanted to, we could end the game at the glow. Mm -hmm. um, or if we wanted to, we could push on and see what else is going on. So we have a couple of a couple of options once we hit the glow. Hmm. Oh, cute. <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> I almost said the same thing. All right. Anybody feeling moved to move the Magus? Oh, there's so much pressure. Uh, no crash. I'm, I'm happy to facilitate if, if you'd like me to. Go for it. Okay. No one else has jumped. All right. <laughs> so. You all continue your journey from Crow Hall. And as you do, and the, the land, the land is beautiful on this side. Like it's just large sweeping plains of grass and, you know, rolling hills. Like it's just, it's beautiful here in between, in the spaces between, like nowhere near any civilization. Like this place has grown lush and green and beautiful, but like, you also notice as you travel that there's no one out here. Like it doesn't seem like this place is settled by anyone. Like, it doesn't appear like anyone's like cultivating the land or lives anywhere nearby. Like you don't see any smoke rising from like far off chimneys or anything like that. Like it's very remote, uh, almost abandoned out here. Um, and one night when you're starting to break for camp, you notice that the sun's not going down or it, at least this seems like the sun's not going down. It's like this perpetual glow in the distance on the horizon where the sun should be setting. And yet it is not. And you don't see the sun. Like, it's not like there's a, an orb of sunlight that's indicating to you that the sun is still up. Um, but just this glow, like, and it's, it starts as a sunset. It starts and it looks like a sunset, but the colors seem to shift almost imperceptibly from the warm oranges and yellows and pinks of sunset to like like iridescent more like white shimmery blues and greens like like as the as it grows dark the colors of that glow like it's still as bright as ever but like the colors start to shift and as this this light sort of casts itself over the wide open plain and fall you can see it fall on the on the magus's face and like for a moment you almost think you glimpse their true form like there's just something that strikes in your heart that like oh that's what they really look like and like for a moment they look the same to all of you but none of you realize it there's just this moment where you're like oh like you feel like you've seen something you're not supposed to see um uh but like what strikes you all is that that form, whatever that form is, looks at peace and happy and content. There it is. That, that is where I was born. And we are here again. Not mm. quite. But we are getting there. It is fainter than I remember. It used what to is... fill the whole sky. The glow. It must yes. have been magnificent. It was. Neither day nor night could penetrate it. It lit. Well, it lit even all the way as far as my ruins, my dear Crow Hall was bathed in his light day and night as well. And what happens to us when we are bathed in its light? I guess that is for you to see. The glow affects everyone differently. Surely you have some idea. Everyone's experience can't possibly be completely different. 
Are you the same as any other person in this group? Certainly not. No one person is the same. We are each of us an individual in one way, at least, that makes us special. You can't have the same experience as Leaf or Darthor in the glow. It is impossible. It is ridiculous. Hmm. Are you afraid, Fawn? Afraid of I what? Not, I do not ask as, a, as an attempt to call into question your bravery. Fear is an important and healthy thing. I think you as a warrior, if anyone, understands that. I am mostly just curious. Fear. Fear is fuel. And I don't have, I don't have much left in me. So I don't know how to answer your question other than to say, I am looking forward to when this journey is over for it will, it will make my future path much clearer. I do not like this uncertainty just like it to be done so whatever is next can come next mm. I think I understand you quite well Vaughn I am also ready for whatever is coming next well, I am sorry for the way you have suffered from the abuses of the power that people have gained from my presence. What happened to you was not right. I would help you if you would accept it. You need not wait to see whether or not my death will bring it about. You mean to tell me that you could have helped me the entire time and instead said nothing? For weeks. I offered now, not because I wished to withhold from you, but because I knew one way or the other, if I offered at the beginning of this journey or the end, you would still be angry with me. Well, I mean, you were right because that doesn't excuse it. No, it certainly doesn't. And I'm not trying to make any excuses. But I am making the offer. I, I mean, I would be a fool to turn it down, despite its timing. My... my my entire life, my mother's entire life, my family's entire life for these past years has all been devoted to this. So yes, please help. A brother is making his way home to a mother who just finished making her daughter's favorite meal, hoping that tonight is the night she returns from her journey but she will have that meal with her son instead. She will be all the happier for it. And even more so when you do return. So, so you, it's done? It's done. Uh, she can't help it. She kind of like, her like, kind of legs come out from under her a little bit. Um, uh, Leaf goes Magus, to yeah, kind of catch her. The Magus also extends a hand. She's like, she's like, ah, giant. Um, Sorry. Uh, well, she doesn't want to get murdered. Um, um, yeah, and she's just, I mean, she's just going to stay there because she is very, 
very, very tired. Um, and now we have, uh, we have the ability to kind of extend this a bit um, into more individualized scenes. What's interesting about the glow is that each one of these uh, options will um, signify a significant change in any of the characters who go to one of these places. Mm. I... Mm. I would like to do voices, but I am still pondering uh, exactly what that means. Um, You know what? Yeah. Okay. We're just going to, I'm just going to cap this off and I'm going to go to voices. Um, uh, I think um, <clears throat> Fawn uh, just stays there, like on her knees, with her sword, you know, kind of as like a support. Um, and everyone eventually, you know, leaves after the <laughs> thing, but she's just still there, um, kind of sitting. Uh, because, you know, not only were her actual literal legs taken out from under her with that, but so were, uh, oh my God, metaphorical <laughs> legs are taken out from under her as well. I was like, what is the other word? Um, figurative. That's what I was looking for. Um, so she sits there and she sits there and, um, you know, I think the glow s spreads a little bit and retracts depending on the time of day. And it's just like, it's creeping like like a sunrise, like just closer and closer and closer to her just kind of sitting there. Um, and then, you know, then it finally like hits her in the face. Um, and she just kind of looks up at just everything around her, you know, just like, the hills and the path and the shrubbery and just everything and and it all looks different now um she's not quite in tune enough with her feelings to understand why um but she she cries the glow hits her and she cries um and then she changes she is she's no longer she's no longer a knight she lays her sword down where she knelt and then her token changes if i can find the other one uh, she does not know what she is anymore, but she is, she no longer has the need to be a knight. So she is, she is fawn of Stormguard now. Wow. Um, I think, uh, I think Caspian is going to take, um, a turn at touching. Um, why you serve the Magus. And I think that as the Magus decides to continue into the glow towards where magic was born, um, Caspian hangs back for a while, um, kind of bathing in the glow and remembering their time as an apprentice when they had not yet begun to sprout their first feathers. And that was the very first time they ever met the Magus. And the Magus t told them that they would live to see the end of magic. And that almost scared Caspian into leaving um, because the idea of of living to see the end of magic terrified them. 
Um, and then they realize that the reason the Magus told them that is because the Magus was looking for a friend, someone to rely on as they reach their end days. And so the Caspian has served um, the Magus their whole life uh, in the purpose of being a companion for them when they died. Um, and uh, today is the day they lose their name and simply become a raven of Ravenhall as the feathers, uh, the transformation seems powered by the, the glow and completes itself and their form takes on the full raven, uh, the full raven body. Um, they are still, you know, humanoid in size, um, but they, their face has now completely transformed into that of a raven's. Um, and yeah, so they are now just a raven of Ravenhall. No longer Caspian. And Randy already lost something. How can he lose anything else? Oh. Lose it all. Well, yeah. Just just leave him. Let, let him keep what he already had. And yeah, no, I mean, like, no. if, you, if you want to, we can we can make a decision here now. I actually I'm I'm I was thinking one of the things I was thinking about doing is like continuing on, like there's a whole other side of this map. Uh like there like this can very easily stretch into a campaign of 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 uh Mm -hmm. A fall of magic, and there's so many different paths you can take, as Amanda was saying before. But I kind of like the idea that reaching the glow is where we draw this story to a close. But I agree. as we do, the Magus sort of turns from the glow to whoever it is that follows them beyond. Um, and with a, a, did you have anything you wanted to add, by the way, um, Max? Like a conclusion for Leaf? Um. I think the honest truth is, I mean, the one thing that I think Leaf would lose, or at least change, would be his name. But m I think more than anything, he would do it by watching Fawn lay down her sword. That Leaf's name was given to him because he was a reminder to everyone around him that everything must fall. And he no longer needs to kill anything anymore. Um, and so he would change, he would get rid of the name. Uh, but Does that I, more than the, instead? Uh, Hey giant. Yes. Am I still to die this day? Shall I go pick up my sword one last time? Hmm. No, there's no need for it. Today is a day of change. Today, you and I seem to be new people, little knight. I am. Do you want to pick up the sword? I. I am more comfortable with it in my hand or at my side, certainly. But it no longer, no longer moves me. Hmm. Good. Then I will not let it move me either. You live and hopefully so do I. You've always agreed on that point. Well, good luck. And to you, the same. And he kind of goes off to follow the Magus. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say that uh, Darthor would do the same. Um, uh, and I, I don't know. I, I imagine, Aki, that you have something in mind. 
I do. Um, Caspian, Caspian trails behind, but also does continue on as well. Um, but it's the Magus that as they move on in the glow seems to fill the sky more and more as you grow closer to it, that they turn to the rest of you and they say, what lies beyond the horizon is a world you have never seen peoples and places you have never met and stories that have never been heard. I do not ask that you go with me and I do not know what is on the other side of this, whether or not I will go with you. But I believe that what lies beyond are the answers you seek or at least intriguing questions to follow up upon. The choice is yours. Remember that magic isn't just the power to make things the way you want them, to create baubles from thin air or move the wind. Magic is in the deeds that you do, in the ways that you treat others. And in the way you tell your story, words are the most magical power of all. And they kind of, again, you get that glimpse of what you feel perhaps, perhaps, uh, perhaps is their true form, uh, a great white raven that stretches its wings across the horizon and seems to lift into the sky and fly towards that glow. And they're just this large moving bird. And they seem to look over their shoulder now and then and kind of open their mouth in a caw that you just hear as follow if you will, and let's tell more stories. And that is where we are going to end Fall of Magic. <laughs> I like this game. I want to play it again. I want to play it again. I'm game. definitely going Good to play game. this game again with friends. And I highly recommend Oh, it. no. So not with us then. You know, um, with people you actually <laughs> I know. I get it. Oh, I get it. It's fine. I get it. It's fine. <laughs> With, with more friends. Cause like, there are so many different ways to play this game. So many, like, I, I can't emphasize enough. Like there's whole sections of this that we didn't even get to do or like show you. And I, I'm just encouraging you definitely check out Fall of Magic on Roll20. Like it's such, oh, it's such a beautiful game. Everything about this game made me so excited when I started really like researching and studying. Like I, I've really been looking forward to running it and I'm so glad that I got to run it with all of you. Just absolutely beautiful. Like, ugh, I love all of you so much. And I want all of you to love them too. So we're gonna go around the horn so that you can find out how to follow these people and see what else they're up to. Let's start with Max. Um, come follow and, and love me on the internet. Uh, I, on Twitter, I'm at Brosis Movies. That's like brother, sister movies. Uh, and you obviously can catch me here every week mucking around with my obvious enemies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Randall. Uh, Ran Randall. I've, I've not Randall. been called that before, <laughs> but it's cool. Uh, also, uh, Randy, I just want go ahead. Sorry. No, thank you. I just want you to know that uh, Max's uh, caption said Bruce's movies. So that is also... Uh, no. So, Hold on, I'm going to start a new Twitter account. Give me one Bruce's, so. Bruce's movies, never mind. We're not going to go into yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> so my name is Randy Alvarenga. You can catch me on uh, Twitter at uh, Roller Raja. That's R-O-L-L-E-R-R-A-J-A. -A, uh, or on Instagram or something at <laughs> R-A-J-A-012. Colin, Colin made an excellent point in chat that Randell is R-A-N-D-E-L, last son of, of um, Krypton. Krypton. Oh. So you're, congratulations. <laughs> I never do. You are, you are Randell. <laughs> I did not know I was that. <laughs> very, very, of course. 
Colin's being silly in chat. I need to stop being distracted by chat. All right. Yeah, I was like, um, don't listen to Colin. Okay. Amanda. <laughs> uh, don't listen to Colin is my middle name. <laughs> oh, um, no. <laughs> it's panned out. Love you. Um, oh, I heard it. You heard it, too. Um, I... <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Amanda. Uh, uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Geek Powers. Uh, I like to talk about sports, sorry, and games and books and mostly baseball. But Amanda's come join me anyway. It doesn't hurt. Nerd. And I, I like lots of things. Yes, she does. She's awesome. Uh, sorry to have interrupted you while you're trying to give us your very cool intro, but I had to tell everybody that you're our very favorite sports nerd. Very, very favorite. I'm Aki. You can find me on Twitter at MixGina and a Bottle. That's M X G I N I I N A B O T T L E. My entire streaming schedule can be found on my personal Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Shidari Aki. That's S H I D A R E A K I. And uh, make sure to check me out um, Sunday for New Pantheon, this other show that I do on this channel. Uh, we are currently in season three of New, uh, New Pantheon Academia, or season six of New Pantheon as a whole brand. Um, we've been doing this a while. There are lots of really cool episodes coming up in our season. We've unlocked a Gundam episode. We've unlocked a musical episode. I so can't wait. definitely <laughs> want to check out this absolutely bonkers season it's oh, gonna be I wanna sing. really really good uh, like i'm sing. excited i'm so excited to finally be getting to do a musical episode for this channel it's i have been a so many questions about what that <laughs> involves i know me too i i i just want to show up and like sing in the chorus of whatever it is do do it we'll have i'll we'll just have our little chorus on but yeah like oh, check that out that's ball. Stephen Pope, Eric Reichert, uh, Critical Bard, R.I.P. Mika, and myself uh, rocking it out to some overarms. That'll be at 4 p.m. PT on Sunday. Um, and I think it's about time now that we get ready to do a giveaway. Give it away some dice. It is too late Yimmy. to answer the raffle if you did. Unfortunately, you won't win. But the <gasps> Bard 1971 has won the Ooh. hard dice, uh, Die Hard Dice Pride giveaway dice. Yay! Yay. Oh, Congratulations, oh, the oh, Bard oh, oh, won. We are very happy for you. We hope you enjoy this. Make sure that your whispers are open so that we can get in contact with you about how to get you your winnings. Uh, if you if you don't have your whispers open, we can't get your information from you, and you can't win your free. You can't get your free stuff. We like uh, but yes, open huh? your whispers to us. <laughs> we're not creepy this is fine this is all <laughs> fine but yes thank you all again so much for joining us tonight we are so excited to have you and i also would like to report that we currently have 61 of the 150 subs we need to hit our goal oh so shit. it's a little less than halfway but we're getting but we are a little real... less than halfway yeah through the season um, yep, a little house halfway through the season. Speaking of which, our episode oh, next hey. week, you want to tell us what we're doing next week, uh, Amanda? Yes, I am excited. I um, I chose a game called Cobwebs, um, which is kind of a, uh, uh, well, it's not kind of, it's a, it's a mystery. Uh, you're investigating um, the disappearance uh, of someone very close to you, um, but it's awesome because there are three separate roles, well, four, and you rotate between which ones you play. So everyone has an opportunity to shape the story differently and to move it forward. And I'm really excited to um, teach you all how it works. I'm excited to learn it. It's gonna investigate. Be I'm gonna bring a. I'm gonna bring a magnifying glass. Like, yes, I'm here for it. Oh, I have. I have a deer stalker cap. Oh, yes, you have to wear. I don't actually have a magnifying glass. It. I'm gonna have to find one, but I will wear that definitely hat. wear my deer stalker. Yep. Yep, I will do it. All I'm right. going to make sure that someone near and dear to me uh, mysteriously disappears. Oh, no. Uh -oh. oh, no. Sonia, that. run. <laughs> Any... <laughs> run. Run away. Run, run now, Sonia. Run while you still can. 
but yes, uh, I think we are going to wrap it up here tonight. Uh, and again, want to thank everybody who came in and subbed and donated and, and gave us messages to read out, toasts and all that good, good stuff. I believe we are going to do uh, a, a raid now. We're going to do some raiding. So everyone, if you would like to join us for our raid of uh, Perception Studio, I think is who are going to be ready tonight. Mm. And also, please don't forget that if you're joining our Discord, we do have RP channels happening. So if you want to do some role playing, that's something that's happening in our Discord, and you might okay. want to join, if not for the the chance to play an original character in one of the the many varied worlds that we have created here on Save for a Show. Definitely do that. Excellent. All right, let's do it. Let's raid. Yeah. All right. Join Everybody, thank you so much. We'll thank see you, you next week. Goodbye. Thank you.